and love the job You walking in your perfect with pink mascara In your cup oh. when you start to dance, that's why me love Next your dressing gown is about to fall down, 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 down. Girl, let me thank you Let me thank you for all of you Now you know what you're doing today. Hello guys We're going to boxing blocks and at the home of Nigeria Africa boxing. Please, if you're new to this channel, make sure you click the like and of course the subscribe button right now. And also go to the notification bell icon, click it, and select all oh, straight on up any banger a new exclusivity. You will definitely be notified. Francis the Predator Ngano. <laughs> I said that uh, he heard. Uh, Joshua has a suspect chain and saying that Eddie Hearn of Matro Boxing and Team Joshua uh, are kind of underestimating him. He said that he's going to test that chain come March 8th, you know, in Arabia Saudi. Let's, of course, hear from him right here and then uh, proceed. Big ups to Arya Elwani, I think is the name. Yeah. That content is to you. Is right. Yes, of course. Uh, I, I had <laughs> I had him on my show uh, the Monday after your fight. Uh, I don't know if you saw his comments. You know, both he and and AJ were a little bit dismissive of your skills going into the Fury fight. They gave you more props on the back end. But can I play you his comments about a potential at the time you versus Anthony Joshua fight and get your response? Okay. Okay, here's Eddie Hearn back in October. Francis Ngannou against Anthony Joshua is one of the biggest fights in the history of the sport. And I promise you this, respect to Francis, easy work for my man. And I know, I know Ariel, I know you're getting a little bit high right now. I know the MMA world are just walking in the clouds, but we'll bring it straight back down to reality. You can't tell me here for a second that Ariel. he's not going to smoke him. You know that. No, but that's what I want. No, I want you to sell me the fight, he's, Ariel. He's not going to smoke him. You tell me Francis Ngannou can beat Anthony Joshua. Ngannou lands that punch that he landed in the third round. I don't know if AJ gets off the mat. No, Ariel. You're crazy. So you think Ngannou will beat Joshua? Not only do I think Ngannou can beat Joshua, <laughs> I think you're being incredible. You're doing the same thing that you did. I love it. Uh, I love it. Actually, what's no, it? What's no, it what's but this it? is why. No, but all of a sudden, we've gone from a night that's farcical, right? Pre fight on Saturday. That, but that was, Many that was you was and AJ farcical. that said that. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you and not AJ. AJ. No, no, no. AJ no, said it was me. a gimmick fight. AJ said it was a gimmick fight. Yeah, he, yeah. He's, well, I'm saying he wasn't interested in the gimmick fight when it was proposed to him. He's not, yeah. you know, so, but a lot of people's perception pre fight Saturday was that that fight was farcical, right? We are now in a position where we're debating if Francis Ngannou beats Anthony Joshua. Take my money and I will show you what happens when Anthony Joshua fights Francis Ngannou. Easy money, Eddie says. You see that? What do you make of these comments, Francis? Well, Eddie is a promoter. So that's like a routine for him, like a deja vu. I mean, uh, it's just like he, he said the same thing all the time, just not about Francis Ngannou, but about somebody else. That's how he does. That's what he does. But um, man, the day is set. It's two months from now, and I I don't think uh, if he any of them think they are going to have an easy money, well, too bad for them. Um, and uh, by the way, answering that question, if uh, AJ take the the, uh, the punch that um, Fury took, me too, I don't guarantee that is going up. I have heard that he doesn't have a chin. I'm going to fight now. <laughs> yes, the likes of Andy Ruiz. Uh... Well, it is funny that uh, Ngannou saying that he heard that Joshua doesn't have a chin. As if maybe like everybody is made of uh, iron. I think no one, no one is made of iron. Ngannou might have a very strong chin. He might, he might have he might has all the strongest chin um in combat sports. I say that because the elbow he took from Tyson Fury. I mean it was a clear elbow. Like Fury he tended to throw that uh that that um 
striking um like he kind of threw it like an mma fighter and he intended to do damage with it but ngano took it and just kept coming forward yes we all also thought that uh um our brother jojo has an iron chain until well jean jelly cracked it and now jojo's stream might not be the same okay it takes one guy Let's not forget Joshua is a hard puncher. I don't think Ngano would love to be taking punches from Joshua because he would definitely feel it. And if he doesn't react to it, if he doesn't react, if he can't counter Joshua effectively, he will go, he will get bro broken down by Joshua. But I'm not gonna just tell you that oh this is a clear victory for Joshua is gonna be one side is gonna be like uh, basically um it's been decided it's already been decided that joshua wins no 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 this is a dangerous fight for joshua because ngano can also crack the guy's got power his left hook is the most dangerous and joshua like literally has been dropped before um he's been through diversity ngano i don't think he's gonna have been dropped like okay in, in mma is different so basically you get take down i uh, take it down by even uh, I think Stipe Miocic uh, took him down in, in their first fight. Rematch, I'm going to destroy him. So, it is understandable. Ngano is a very confident guy. He's not afraid of anybody. Um, and he's not definitely afraid of Joshua. But I think he's underestimated Joshua as, a, as an elite heavyweight boxer. And I think you will find out. Because Joshua's speed is scary. His, counter, his pull and counter will probably be used against Ngano. Ngano will take a lot of butcher's punches, but for how long will he continue to take it? Because he's definitely gonna get hurt if he thinks okay. Because I go just chain and stuff like that, I'm just gonna walk forward and uh, break this guy down. But the thing I'm happy, the reason why I'm so happy about this is because Joshua, we know the Joshua that might show up. But I think we will not see the Joshua that fought, uh, let's say Usyk the first time that was. Gone shy that fought Riz second time because Riz second time was like masterclass. By the way, he had both series. But I mean, the Joshua that I, that that has been kind of uh, um not he's not been himself. So I'm happy that we've, we are getting Joshua a different beast in Joshua. So it's gonna be a different a, 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 an interesting fight. What do you make of this, Maojo? Make of uh, Gano's statement? Do you think? Uh, um he's overconfident or do you think he's just he has to be confident mm -hmm. as a fighter you know um there's there's a number of things hey ray how are you my brother man and I, I like say good morning good evening good afternoon to all of our listeners um all around the world um so um where do i even start i like this i'll tell you why i like this um you see joshua in my opinion he doesn't really perform well when his opponents don't talk shit about him okay i think that he performs better when he feels a little bit angry um and i remind you when he fought um um what's this guy's name the, the last guy he fought um the guy he fought recently his last fight when he fought um otto Wallen. When he fought Otto Wallen, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Ray? Hear you, bro. Right. You know, if you remember going into that fight, Otto Wallen was, man, if you win a fight by show of confidence, Otto Wallen should really would have beaten Joshua or should have beaten Joshua. As a matter of fact, should have knocked out Joshua in the first round because Otto Wallen went into that fight full of confidence had his hand on his chest, you know, said that Joshua is gone shy. Joshua hasn't got a chain anymore. Joshua is past his best days. Joshua is this and Joshua is that. And, you know, if you remember the very popular saying that everybody has got a plan until they get punched in the face. Um, I think that Francis Igano is a very confident guy is um is a warrior and all of that but i think he's going to be i think 
Ngano is going to be shocked when he gets in there. I think the first jab or the first punch that lands on Ngano will shock Ngano. I'm telling you that now. I don't people, I don't, I actually don't think people truly understand how powerful Joshua is. And it is not even a question of how powerful he is alone. It is also the way Joshua throws his punches very, very fast. Very fast, very precise. Now, I'm going to compare Joshua, the way he throws his punches. I'll compare him to Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is not tidy the way he throws his punches. He throws his punches and just rest on you, right? He doesn't properly throw a punch and sit on that punch, crisp punch. You know them kind of punches that you throw and it's crisp, it's sharp, it's strong. So what Tyson Fury does is he extends his whole hand and arm and he throws his punches and then he tries to rest on you. That was how he beat Wilder. It wasn't because he was uh, Tyson Fury's punches were so powerful and he knocked out Wilder. No, he tired Wilder out. It made him tired. He rested on him over and over and over and over again until Wilder got exhausted. And then at the point of exhaustion, he knocked him out. Okay? But the way Joshua fights is he's not going to rest on you. He's not going to grab, jab and grab or jab and no. He will throw good combinations and i think that you know if ngano goes into that fight thinking that joshua is chinny joshua is this joshua is that he's going to be shocked he's going to have to wake up to a rude awakening because the first punch that lands on ngano see okay the way i like to look at this fight ray is i like to look at what ngano does better than joshua and what joshua does better than ngano Okay, because when everybody was talking about Otto Wallen, the exact thing I said is what I'm saying now. I said, okay, what is that thing that Otto Wallen does better than Joshua? I can't see it. At least in the case of Usyk, we all saw it that Usyk is a better boxer. Usyk moves better. Usyk is very fast. We saw a lot of things that would work for Usyk. In the case of Otto Wallen, I couldn't see it. And in this case as well, listen, Ngano has not been properly tested. Tyson Fury, people keep talking about Tyson Fury. Tyson Fury is overrated, my people. Tyson Fury is overrated. People need to wake up. I don't know when people are going to wake up and realize that this guy is overrated. Way overrated. He beat Wilder two times, right? And everybody has been singing his praises and be like, oh my God, he's the best of all time. Who is Wilder? Yes. I've been supporting kind of in a way supporting wild in the last one or two years because of the way he fought in the third fight against fury he gave his best he gave his all he gave his heart in that fight and that's the reason why i have grown some respect for him but now let's call a spade a spade let's face some reality and some facts right here the two times the wilder stepped up once against fury and the second time again, Joseph Parker, he got beat. So really, how good is Wilder? If we want to go by, yeah? Okay, look at it this way. When Wilder fought Fury the first time, Wilder won some rounds. When he fought Fury the second time, I think he won about one or two rounds before the, the fight got stopped, you know, um, I think it was round number seven. The third fight as well, he won some rounds. But when Wilder fought Joseph Parker, a better boxer, a better mover. Why that did not win a single round? And then when Fury fought Otto Wallin, Otto Wallin won that fight. Let's let's just call it as it is. He won that fight because if that was somebody else, if there were to be that that was to be another fighter, they would have called that fight off. Otto Wallin would have won based on the cuts. Okay, but when Otto Wallin got in there against Joshua, Joshua totally totally and remember joshua fought a better auto wallin a better auto wallin the auto wallin that fought fury isn't as good as the one joshua fought and joshua totally 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 destroyed him now um ungano had a good fight against fury but like i said how good is fury I know people are so over the hill and hyping this man. 
but this man is not as good as you think, as people are saying. He's not that good. If you want to... Um, I was saying that if you, if, 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 if Francis Ngano goes in there underestimating Joshua, saying Joshua has got a glass chain, he's going to get it tested. Joshua is faster than Ngano, way faster. And in a boxing ring, in a boxing ring and in a boxing match, I don't know. It has not been proven to me that Ungano hits harder than Joshua at all. Because Ungano did eat Fury. Fury went down, but it wasn't a devastating punch. Come on, let's let's. It was a react. It was kind of like a reaction. It was a left hook. Fury went down, but he got up. He got up and he was okay when he got up. He was not dazed. He wasn't, his legs were still with him and he was still okay. And he fought until the end of the fight. So if Ngano is such a devastating puncher, I don't think that Fury, okay, look at this example. When Fury got up against Fury, I mean, against his, um, against Wada in the third fight, when he got up the first time, he, he went down again because he was still shaking. He was still, he wasn't himself properly. He wasn't okay. He had to take a round for him to get himself back, to actually get his, his, his legs and everything back. But when Fury went down against Ngano, he got up and he was still fighting. So how good and how big of a puncher, a puncher is Ngano really in a boxing match, in boxing, you know? because remember in MMA, they put on, is it four hands glossy glove or three hands? I don't remember. Uh, the, the, the glove they put on is as good as you not having a glove on. Because yeah, it's four with that, hours, bro. Four, yeah, four hands. It's not. It's not. It's not a lot, bro. It's not a lot. So if you're putting on four hands, you're obviously going to be more powerful. Because there isn't a lot of padding in that. There is hardly any padding in it. So it's more like you're actually punching with your fist. So it's going to be stronger. You're going to hit harder. But when you've got a boxing glove on. It's not the same. You're not going to hit as hard. So for you to hit really, really hard with a boxing boxing gloves, it simply means that you are a very, very wicked puncher. And I'm sorry, the fight I saw against Fury, well done to Ngano and all of that. I was super impressed, super impressed. Don't get me wrong. However, however, the guy is slow. Fury is overrated and Fury is done. Fury is going to get beat you're going to, I, in fact, I'm predicting today, yeah, I, I don't think that fight is going to happen in February anyway. Sorry, I'm dividing a little bit. And um, the fight between Fury and Usyk, I don't think that that fight is going on. But if that fight happens, I'm predicting today, call me stupid, call me delusion, call me whatever you want to call me. It's going to be a technical knockout. I am telling you today. It's not going to be on point. I'm saying it today that Fury is going to get knocked out technically. It won't be a one-point knockout, but it will be a technical knockout. Write it down that I said it. And then it's going to be clear to everybody that Fury has been a fraud and overrated. He is not as good as people think he is at all. So if Ngano went in there with Fury and he did what he did, you know, knocked him down, Fury got up. Fury didn't, I don't even think Fury trained for that fight, to be honest. Look at the shape he came in. He came in in a very bad shape. A very, very bad shape. So if Ungano is saying all these things, I just hope he's really, really, really not relying on Joshua having a weak chin because he'll be surprised that Joshua doesn't have a weak chin. Joshua had a problem going into the Ruiz fight. We all know it. Yes, Joshua has not admitted. He has not said it openly, but what he said, he said, one day when I write my book, you will see the details in my book. You will see what happened to me when I went into that fight against Ruiz and why what happened happened. Joshua hasn't got a weak chain. Joshua took a straight ride from Klitschko. Do people know how hard Klitschko eats? Klitschko hits hard. Hard. A straight ride. And he got up. He got up and won that fight. So if people are saying he's got a glass jaw, blah, blah. I, I say it today, right? Joshua's chain is better than Fury's because Fury gets knocked down almost in every fight. Any little fight that is challenging, any fight that is a little bit challenging, Fury gets dropped all the time. Even against Ngano, a novice 
okay, I don't want to say novice boxer, but a guy who, who made his boxing debut for the first time, knocking you down that way, it just goes a long way to show me that Fury isn't what people think he is. So Ngannou going into this fight and saying all these things, well, it's okay for him to say these things. I remember very clearly a certain man called Otto Wallin said more than this. He said way more. He was so full of confidence. He was have, he conducting interviews almost every day on boxing social. I was watching the interviews and he was so confident. He got in there, the first jab that went to his body, the guy realized that, damn, damn, this is different. And I think Ungano is going to be shocked. Ungano has not been in there with anybody that hits as hard as Joshua in MMA and boxing combined. He's going to be shocked. And Joshua is faster than Ungano, so he can't even counter Joshua. He can't. Joshua is going to use pull counter. Steady on him. Steady. People may call me a Joshua fanboy. Call me wherever you want to call me, but the, the, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. If Ngano is basing his judgment on the fight he had with Fury, Fury is not as great as people think he is. He's overrated. He fought Wada three times. Wada is not good either. I'm sorry. Wada is a devastating puncher, and that's about it. Other than that, he's got nothing else. Look at how Joseph Packard disgraced him. I watched that fight again about three or four days ago. I was like, what am I watching? Absolutely slow. Like, absolutely no skills. Nothing. None. All he's got is that strong, powerful right hand. And that's it. If you take the right hand away, that's it. He's got nothing else. Luis Ortiz, as old as that man is, was beating Wilder. He's, Wilder stopped him in the seventh round. But... Luis Ortiz was beating him like Luis Ortiz was six rounds up. So if Wilder didn't get that right hand, you know, when the gi, then Luis Ortiz would have beat him. He actually would have. So what are we talking about? You have a man who be uh, 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 the same guy three times or two times, and and then everybody's everybody's singing his praises and saying he's the best since sliced bread. Ngano, well done, my brother. Well, I'm just going to say that it's good what you're doing. You're building the fight. You know, obviously, he has to build the fight. He has to say what he has to say. He's saying all these things, but I hope he's going to be well prepared. I hope he's going to get his, his tactics to right because he's going to be shocked to see how quick Joshua is. And he's also going to be shocked. The first jab that hits his body, the first left hook, the first straight right, he's going to be surprised. He's going to know that, right, this guy hits harder. He hits very hard. Maybe even harder than Ungano because he's not proving to me that Ungano is such a devastating puncher in a boxing ring. I'm, I've not seen the evidence yet. Until I see the evidence, I'm going to say that, no, he's not a devastating puncher in a boxing ring. I keep saying that, in a boxing ring. I've not seen the evidence yet until I see the evidence. And you said something, Ray, um, at the beginning of this, very, very key. You said that, um, you know, um, Ngano going into that fight full of confidence and all of this, um, which is good, you know, that you said about him being prepared. And I also hope that he's actually prepared. Because if he's going there overconfident and thinking, I'm just going to go there, Joshua has got a glass jaw and blah, blah, glass chain, he's going to be surprised that he hasn't got a glass chain at all. Because since that Ruiz fight, when he had a problem going into that fight, Joshua has not been down at all. Even when he fought Usyk the first time, if you remember that first fight, the 12th round, Usyk threw loads of punches and Joshua was completely tired. He should have gone down. He didn't go down. Despite the fact that he was completely spent. And you're telling me he's got a glass chain? <laughs> anyway, throughout Joshua's professional career, how many fights now? 29, 30 fights? He's only been dropped by two people. One of them, he avenges loss. 
He's only been dropped by Klitschko, and is only and the, the next person is Andy Ruiz. Other than those two people, no one has dropped him. But we can't say the same of Mr. Fury. No, we can't. He's been dropped many times by different fighters. So I'm gonna be careful, my brother. Say what you got to say, build the fight, talk trash, get Joshua pissed. That's what I want to see. I want you to piss Joshua. I want you to piss him off. I want you to call him a bomb, call him a bodybuilder, call him a glass chain, call him everything because that will get Joshua angry. And we know Joshua performs better when he's angry. So that's all I got to say, bro. I've said a lot, but yeah, that's all I have to say for now. Thanks, bro. I appreciate take on this, guys. If you heard from my boy, Joe, uh speaking his mind and breaking down this fight bro this fight the press conference is on monday first press conference damn i will definitely yeah i think when I, I, get, I, I when i get back you know when yeah, i get back from work yeah i think the press the press conference is going to be boring though i have to be honest it's going to be very very boring um I I am not I, looking forward I, I, I to I want to see Ngannou get on the Joshua skin. I know Ngannou is us. Uh, he he is won't. Like, he won't. I think he will. He get. won't say anything to Joshua. No, no, no. He won't. He will just be smiling and smacking on Joshua. He will shake Joshua's hands and Joshua will do the same. He won't. Trust me. It's going to be a very boring respect. They're going to respect each other so much. Yes, Ngannou will say what, we, what he has to say in interviews. Who, who will? Who will? Right? Uh, Israel uh, 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 so Who will he support? <laughs> no, he's going to be neutral. He's going to be neutral. He can't because obviously, yes, he's close, very, very close to Ngano. But at the same time, Israel Adesanya and Anthony Joshua are from the same state. The both of them are Ogun State boys. Yeah, but but they're not close. They're not, they're close. not close. They are not, they are not as, listen, Israel Adesanya is not in every every Joshua's fight, but he will always be at Ngano's fight. You know? Yeah, because obviously they, they they competed in the same sports, and obviously. also and also you know? like the three with three African kings, you know, it's just something that era was magical, bro. Damn, now none of them are champions, none. Uh, Ngannou yeah, is out of UFC. Uh, is that the same lost? And come on, lose my loss, damn it. Yeah, I know, right? I know. But I it's know. funny. It's funny. Well, the UFC listen. have have gotten a little bit boring now. It's ever since. Yeah, I, I was uh, just, I was just, I was just gonna say that since those three guys, you know, lost their, you know, their their pool, you know, in terms of their popularity, UFC has gone down a lot. Gone no, down since, a since lot. They, this, since they stopped being champions. So like, not that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I'm trying to say. Yeah, since they stopped being champions, um, the UFC has really, really suffered. Really, really suffered, man. Suffered in terms of popularity and all of that. Really suffered, you know. Um, and I think even someone like um, Israel should 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 try his hands on boxing as well. You know, he might be able to get a few guys out of there. You know, he might be able to, even if he doesn't get them out. He's also get that money. Go to Saudi and get the money. You know, regardless of what happened between um, uh, uh, AJ and Francis Ngano, Ngano is a winner, man. He's a winner in life. The first fight against Fury got 10 million. This one they said is getting about 20 million. Bro, that guy is a winner in life, bro. He's a winner. A winner. You know what you call a winner? He's a winner in life, brother, man. Very impressed. Very happy for him. Like, very, very happy. You know what's yeah. so funny? Ngano. In 2012, Joshua won the Olympic gold medal. That same year, mm -hmm. Gano was homeless in Paris, having it, have, yeah. having traveled from Cameroon, uh, through from Cameroon. Via, via Morocco, you know, land and stuff like that. Bro, yeah. that's crazy. Do you know how crazy that is? It is absolutely crazy. Bro. Like, 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 no, like basic, basically, they're basically Gano, Gano would have like. The Ngano never, never like there is no, even if a witch doctor t t told told Ngano that he will be in this position, he would never believe it. Bro, remember that interview when the the interviewer asked Joshua to describe Ngano. I love the description. I really love it. He said, "Inspiration." 
I love that. You see, for me, when I look at Ngano, I see inspiration that this guy is an inspiration. He, this guy, his story, if, and then Joshua said that if his story don't inspire you, I don't know what will. And that is true. This guy believed in himself. True, true, thick and thin, bro. He believed in himself. Even when Dana White was doing all this nonsense with the UFC, this guy still believed in himself that I'm going to go into boxing and I'm going to make more money. And look at his first fight, 10 million flipping dollars. 10 million. More than all the money he has made in UFC combined, he made in one fight. Now he's making double of that with Joshua. Joshua is going to get, I think, around 25 or 30. Ngano is getting about 20. Bro. Bro. That's mad. One, one, one man's curse is another man's blessing. Um, the underwater messed up the bag, and Ngano is getting his second bag. And I still want to talk about Wilder anyway because I started supporting Wilder, but the guy is beginning to piss me off. That interview you had with with seventy eight, what was what's that interview? What was what was that? What of the interview? You had a sign. You, the one he had, the, the, the one the only Wilder had with seventy eight Sports TV, where they were saying that oh Joshua was happy because he lost. He was celebrating <laughs> with Eddie. What do you mean? What's wrong with this Wilder guy? You sat there with Joshua. You were praising him, bro. Even if we don't get to fight, bro, da, 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 da. it's love, bro. It's all love, bro. I, I think it's just it's part of. It, I think just part of being hurt. Like he, like, he, he lost that in two hundred million dollars, huh? That's yeah, but crazy. why would you be? Why would you be creating a narrative and saying that Joshua was celebrating? He signed a contract to fight you. They've already signed a contract. They, bro, they signed a two fight deal. Two fight deal. The first fight they go, they were going to get fifty million each, fifty million a piece, and he messed up the bag, and he had the got to go back to his Alabama, Alabama to start talking absolute trash. For me, that's not the mentality of a champion. I'm sorry. What you should have done, go back to Alabama and say, listen, you know, I was, I, I wasn't, I, I didn't have a fight for about two years. I was a little rusty. Things didn't go my way, but give me Joseph Parker again. I have to get my revenge. That's what champions do. That was what AJ did. When AJ lost against Ruiz, he said, give me that guy. I don't want no, no build up fight. I don't want no soft touch. Give me the same guy. I don't care how I beat him, but I'm going to go back there. And even when he lost again against Usyk, the same story. Yes, he lost against Usyk twice, but that is the heart of a champion. This guy came to my country, he came to the UK, took my belts away from me. No, I want my get back. Give me the same guy. Let me run it back. Yes, he lost the second time, but at least he tried. And then they asked him, why that? Do you want to fight Parker again? The guy said, hey, well, no, I'm moving on to bigger and better things. The guy beat you. What bigger and better things are you moving on to? Run it back with him. You can still salvage that Joshua fight. You can still savage it. You can still have that fight by the end of this year. Go back in there against Parker under this um, AJ Ngano on the card in March. Go back in there straight away. Go back in there. Get your, your tactics right. Get your timing right. Get a new coach if possible because that porn star of a coach is not a coach to me. Get a proper coach. Go back in there against, against Parker. And knock him the f out. If you go back in there against Parker and knock him out, that that fight becomes bigger. The fight against Joshua even becomes bigger because people are going to. Then you can twist the narrative. Then you can start saying, "Listen, the first fight was because I was out of the ring for a long time. I didn't get my timing right. Certain things didn't go well, but I went back in there and I knocked him the f out." That's what champions do. You went back to Alabama and started lying and giving excuses the little respect i started growing for the guy i've lost the respect again it's hard to love that guy man it's hard well, before I, traveling to I, london I, 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 I love i love water bro i love water like um but i think i think bro i think water water has water has i think to me it behaves like a two-faced you know one of them people that they will say something behind you but when they see you look at when you saw you saw tyson fury in saudi arabia Oh, giving him hugs and kisses and respect. 
blessings, blessings, blessings. After all the shite you said about him, and then straight after that, you started talking about him again and be like, oh, he cheated me, he's a cheat, I hate him. But when you saw him, you're like, oh, blessings, blessings, give him a hug. What's wrong with you? And then you saw Joshua in the press conference. Before going to London, he said, maybe I'm going to have to travel to London and sit down with Joshua and we straighten up. We, we, he's so scared of me. He's scared of me. I'm going to go to London and sit down with him. And at the time, Joshua was in Texas training. So where is he going to take you? If you truly want to sit down with Joshua, get a flight from, from, from say, Olaluta, Alabama, fly into Texas and you guys have a sit down. But there was no need for that anyway because the deal was signed anyway. You guys signed the fights. And then you go, you came into the guy's face, you saw him and you were like, it's all love, bro. Even if we don't fight, I still wish you all the best, bro. It's all love, bro. And then you went back to Alabama straight up and you started chastising the guy again. What's wrong with Wilder? To me, it looks like one of those, that guy would call them two faced Ellen Numeji in your. So, like, what's wrong with you? To me, in Yoruba, I just said it in my language and from Nigeria, they say Ellen Numeji. It's like you're literally you've got you you're too mouthed. You 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 say one thing in the in the person in the person's presence, and the moment you go behind the person, you say something else, bro. If you're a champion, if you're a winner, if you're a warrior, whatever it is that you've been saying behind Joshua or behind Fury, when you see them, say it to their faces. Say it to them. Say to Joshua, you've been avoiding me. You've been you've been you've been avoiding me, and I'm going to get you. Say it to his face. When you saw Fury, tell Fury you're a cheat. And they be like, oh, it's all love, bro. It's all love, bro. Oh, blessings, blessings. And then you, as soon as you went back, you started talking crap again. How do you respect a man like that? I'm sorry. I don't respect people like that. If you're going to say something, say it to my face. And if you're going to say it behind me, say it behind me and say it in my presence as well. I don't, I, I was, I started liking the guy. I started trying to like, and Ray, you're one of the people that made me start warming, warming up towards Wilder. I, I'm saying you're one of the people that influenced me. I have to be honest. Wilder's a good guy. He just had some time for the camera, you know. But I think he going. He, I think he he went to the jungle, like in Costa Rica, to something. What's it called again? Uh, uh, ayahuasca, whatever that thing means. Something like that, and it kind of changed him in a way. It that stuff took away is uh is uh. Let Some, me uh, it's, it's past let me ask like, you, let uh, me ask you a question, bro. Between Wilder and Joshua, who is mentally the weakest between the both of them? Who is actually mentally weak between the both of them? I want to know your own answer. Well, I think we can't really judge on who is mentally weak because both guys are not afraid to fight anyone. But I'm not I, talking about fight, though. I'm talking about mentally weak. Well, Should I, I give know, you my answer? Yeah. Okay, I think Wada is mentally weaker. I'll give you one, my reason. Okay, okay. When Joshua lost, right, his first fight against Ruiz, how many excuses did he give after that fight? I'm asking you, how many this... excuses did he give Joshua? <laughs> but I've not been mentally weak. That's just not... No, hold on. I'm going to give you... I'm... Joshua... Did he give I, any I, excuses? I, I, I know what you're trying to say, but that's not really been that's not really been mentally weak though. It's just Okay, 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 okay. And then and then and then again and then again. Okay, let me just fast forward. Well, I was just gonna go through a series of events, but let me fast forward everything. When he lost against Fury, he went to that ayahuasca thing because he could not handle the defeat. He couldn't handle the fact that he lost to Tyson Fury. He couldn't believe it. He could not handle it. And then he went into that place and messed up his own head. Literally messed up his mentality. That's why I said that I think, in my, it's just my opinion. I may be wrong. I absolutely may be wrong, but this is my opinion. I actually think that the guy is mentally weaker because despite the fact that Joshua showed weaknesses, he showed his weaknesses in the ring, but he did not dodge any fight. He did not stop fighting. Even when he lost against Yusik, what he did was that he came back and took a lesser opposition. He took Jamin Franklin. Was it Jamin Franklin? Is that his name? Franklin, anyway. Yeah, bro. It, yeah, he took on that guy to try and build his confidence again. 
And then after that fight, he took on um, Nordic Nightmare. And then after that, he took on, he took on Otto Wallen. And he said it last year that this year I want to fight three times. And he fought three times. What did Wilder do? What did he do? He went and did Ayahuasca. And then after that, we didn't hear anything for a while. And then when he started talking, he wouldn't stop talking about Joshua, 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 this, Joshua, that, Joshua. How many times does, does Joshua even talk about Wilder? He doesn't. Joshua, this, he just has a personal thing. It, it, that's hatred for him. Joshua this, Joshua that, Joshua this, and then you saw the Joshua face to face. You guys were sitting on the same table, and Joshua was looking at him with a mean face. Joshua was Joshua had a mean look on him. He was looking at him with a mean face. You say anything now, and I'm going to come for you. Wada looked at him, and Wada literally just went, "Yeah, bro, it's all love, bro. It's all love, bro. Even if we don't get a fight, it's all love, bro." You went back to Alabama and you just literally changed whatever it is that you... Come on, man. Come on. How can I respect a guy like that? How? At least with Jaramela, despite the fact that he's a douchebag. Whatever he had to say, he said it behind Joshua and he said it to him as well. He said it to his face. Come on. Hmm. We're just... You're spitting fire, bro. So, guys, you heard it from our brother, my old Joe, man like i've enjoyed this um this topic and we'll be right back you know it's gonna be interesting can't wait for more bro god bless you for all your support the channel and thanks for coming through bro for the channel yeah.